Hello friends, this video on data handling part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Another such example, which is a common scenario for you people. Let's say that we want to do a comparative analysis on the score of students in a school for 10 years. So now you see the situation is not that simple. It, it is more complicated. Why? Because here somebody that in, let's say that it's an external inspector who has come to your school and he wants to know that you know how good the education is in your school so for that he wants to analyze the score of students of the entire school now when he does it for the entire school the entire school has huge number of students let's say that the entire school has some thousand students because it it will have students from class 1 1 to class 12 so there will be huge number of students. Secondly, they want to analyze the result for 10 years because they do, do not want to rely on the data of one year because maybe in 2015, the school, the children performed really, really well. But maybe in 2014, 13, 12, 11 and so on, they were performing really bad. So they do not want to rely on the data for one year. Instead, they want to analyze the score for 10 years. So now just imagine how much data will be there. So this data will actually consist of the score of all the students who have passed out from the school in the last 10 years. Right. And now from all those data, you'll have to find out some average score for every year. So maybe let's say let's think of it in this way let's say for every year starting from say 2005 then 2006 2007 and so on finally till 2015 so for every year you will have to find out the average score uh, from where will you get the average score looking at the score of all the students for that particular year so in 2005 all those thousand students might have scored something somebody would have scored 40 somebody would have scored 60 somebody would have scored even 90 so an average of all of those might give you say an average score of 50 percent for 2006 it might be 55 2007 it might be 69 and so on so this is how you will again get a table of the year and the average score of that school. Now again, when you look at this data, even there will be some 10 rows here because you will see this for 10 years so from 2005, it is still 2015. Again, a huge number of data. Now, instead of representing it like this, if you draw a graph where again the vertical axis you represent score and on the horizontal axis you represent the year. Now let's say for every year you mark the points corresponding to the scores. Let's say 2005 you have a score of 50. Similarly next one 55, next 69. Then it might even drop in 2008. Again it might increase in 2009. It might even increase in 2010 and so on. Now, when you join these points, you get a graph like this. Now, looking at this graph, what can you see? You can see that in the last 10 years, the overall performance or the overall score of that school is gradually increasing. That's what you can say looking at this graph, even though it has dropped in between. But overall, it is like kind of growing. So the quality of education that is being provided in the school is like pretty good. So see this, this, these are all different kind of things that we do with data and that is why we need data. That is why it is important to handle data. So here we are going to discuss all about data handling. So before we go further, let's first understand very clearly what data is. Data is nothing but collection of facts or statistics. Now these facts could be anything. It is not only about the student scores or their attendance. So these facts which we refer as data could be any fact or it could be any statistic. For example, when you look at the scores of the students in a class. Now, what is that? That is nothing but data. Let's see. Here we see a table where you have the names of the students. So the names of the students with their respective scores, as you see that Akash scored 75, Amit scored 45, Rekha 70, Anu 70, Rana 42 and so on. So what is this? This is nothing but a data because this gives you facts. 
this gives you statistics of the entire class now it is not only about the number of students in a class or the student score you think of any data you think of anything which gives you facts maybe the population of a country it it could be uh, the the sale in a shop it could be anything wherever you have facts and statistics that is collectively known as data now why do we talk about handling this data now as you see here now in this entire class there might be some 100 200 students now when you have such a long list managing that data or interpreting out of that data becomes difficult so that is when we talk about organizing the data so we try to organize the data in such a way that it becomes you know more readable it becomes more understandable now i'll give you a small example now this same table can also be organized like this in, instead of having some 100 200 rows telling the score of each students we can also organize the data in this way that the number of students who scored less than 50 is 2 the number of students who scored between 50 to 70 is 5 the number of students who scored more than 70 is 3 now these data is looking at the table which I have shown here. Now when you look at this organized data, this actually helps you to understand the performance of the class that most of the students have scored more than 50 because you see only two students have scored less than 50 rest all of them have scored above 50. So you get get an idea about the performance of the entire class. So this is how an organized data helps because it helps us to understand the uh, statistics better. And that is why we talk of grouping data, we talk of organizing data, we talk of representing data in graphs, in pie charts, etc. So when it comes to organizing data, as I said, so this organized form of data gives us a better idea and looking at this data you can very easily interpret what's happening within the class. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.